Welcome to the heartland of Minnesota. Hundreds of lakes here provide more shoreline than California and Oregon combined. This year-round resort area is the home of Camp Ripley, a state-owned military training site that has been in operation more than half a century. Camp Ripley, through popular demand, has become an important training resource to virtually every active military, reserve, and National Guard component. Unit commanders have a free hand in using the ranges, maneuver areas, and other post facilities. This landlord-tenant relationship offers commanders many unique opportunities not found at other military posts. As we approach the camp on State Highway 371, we see the M48 A5 tank overlooking the highway. The tank, a symbol of our country's military strength, is completely operational and maintained by Camp Ripley personnel. We are now approaching the main gate. Military police and security personnel control the traffic in and out 24 hours a day. Civilian access is monitored very closely to protect them and the troops in training. As we drive through the gate, the armory sits majestically on our right. It is the headquarters for the 47th Infantry Division's 747th Maintenance Battalion and 47th Supply and Transportation Battalion, two of the Viking Division's most important support elements. On our left and down the street are houses to billet the many visitors that come to Camp Ripley. This is Infantry Road. The U.S. property and physical office is next to the armory. The USPFO is the funnel through which all federal money and equipment issued to the Minnesota Army Guard must pass. This office keeps all of the necessary financial records for the federal resources used by the State Guard. The Automated Data Processing Center is also maintained here. Across the street is Building U1, the training site headquarters. The training site manager and his staff provide the day-to-day -day support to units in training practically every week and weekend of the year. More than 28,000 troops will come to Camp Ripley this year. The office of the architect and engineer is also located in Building U1. These staff professionals supervise the construction, maintenance, and repair of all Army National Guard facilities throughout the state. As we continue down Infantry Road, we drive past nearly a mile and a half of troop billeting, metal huts designed for housing 10,000 troops during moderate weather months. The site also has 13 heated year-round barracks to accommodate about 2,500 troops. Other sites of interest at this end of the cantonment area include the chapel, which was entirely built with donations. Chaplain support is normally provided by the using organizations. There's a year-round NCO club and a unique innovation in the military, Camp Ripley's Alternative Center, a one-of-a-kind experiment in human relations. The center was established to provide an atmosphere to relax and find fellowship free of any alcoholic beverages or mood-modifying substances. The facility has free washers and dryers, game, counseling rooms, snack machines, and other features. Financial support is through private donations. In addition, the Post Theater shows full-length feature films during the weeks when units are in training. The Post Exchange. Here is the Officers Club, located at the north end of Area 3. This attractive log structure is also used year-round. And of course, the Camp Snack Bar is a popular place for eating and recreation. Now, let's go over to the Ray S. Miller Airfield and go up in a National Guard helicopter for a better view of the camp. Miller Field operates a control tower during annual training. Aviation units are provided with a 1,600-foot operations building, 10 helicopter tie-down pads, and our newest feature, a 5,000-foot tactical runway. The runway is 75 feet wide and, with the exception of the bituminous surfacing, was constructed entirely by National Guard units during annual training. 
troops can now land here and walk right to their billets, saving time and money. As we circle the cantonment area, we see Nelson Hall, the training site billeting headquarters. Nelson Hall provides housing for 45 officers and dining facilities for 100. Just to the south, we see warehouses. Camp Ripley provides the bulk of the warehouse space for the Minnesota National Guard. State maintenance facilities located in the camp's cantonment area include the Combined Support Maintenance Shop, called the CSMS. This shop provides direct and general support maintenance for all of the Guard's surface equipment. More than 14,000 items are repaired or calibrated here each year. Another maintenance facility on post is MATES, short for Mobilization and Training Equipment Site. MATES loans and maintains large quantities of vehicles, artillery pieces, and construction equipment to the units that train here. This saves the expense of these units having to transport their own equipment from their home stations. Here is another view of our moderate weather housing and some of the winterized buildings. Let's head for the field, where the action's at. On our way, we pass the 10 earth-covered ammunition bunkers. These modern storage facilities are well lit and have explosion-proof wiring and intrusion detection systems. The ammunition on hand is based on the forecasts made by the units in training prior to their coming to camp. Down below is the engineer bridging site on the Mississippi River. The span is about 350 feet wide. Camp Ripley is the only post, army-wide, with a bridging site on a major river. There are the camp's 10 storage tanks for petroleum products. Each holds 15,000 gallons. Ripley has about 53,000 acres of varied terrain. It measures roughly 18 miles north to south and seven miles east to west. The site contains several lakes and creeks and is bordered on the north by the Crow Wing River and on the east by the Mississippi. As we fly over range control, they inform us that one of the training units is about to explode a simulated nuclear device. Perhaps our greatest training asset is the isolation of our training areas. With the exception of the cantonment area, the site is undisturbed by dwellings or civilian roads. The site is served by about 200 miles of roads. Main roads are graveled and continuously maintained. There are 14 helicopter pads located throughout the reservation for quick medical evacuation to the troop medical clinic in the cantonment area. And there is a pad at St. Gabriel's Hospital in Little Falls. Let's sit down at one of those pads for a ground level view of the camp's special features. For infantry units, there are mortar and anti-tank firing ranges, ranges for small arms firing, including live fire courses and many tactical training areas. Artillery is fired from non-established firing positions with units performing their own surveys. We have 118 permanent survey control monuments to facilitate field training. Our tank range can accommodate firing all of the tank gunnery tables up through table eight. Engineer units have several construction sites and a demolition range. There are even prisoner of war compounds for military police training. Aviation units have ranges and areas for aerial gunnery and terrain flying, as well as air mobile insertions and extractions. Training also implies schools and courses, and Camp Ripley hosts a variety of them, such as the basic training orientation course called BTOC, for new guard recruits awaiting departure to the various Army training centers. It consists of one weekend of intensive activity designed to acquaint these young Minnesotans with the rigors of active Army basic training. The course has a profound effect on the percentage of recruits who will complete basic. The Minnesota Military Academy, the State Guard's primary source of officers, conducts a curriculum with two-week annual training sessions at Ripley, giving us a more mature and better qualified officer. 
for non-commissioned officer courses under the academy's curriculum conduct all or part of their training activities at Ripley. It's not hard to see that the site is ideal for training, but what about the off-duty hours? Recreational opportunities are plentiful. We've already mentioned our alternative center. In addition, the post has four tennis courts, 11 ball diamonds, picnic areas, athletic equipment for virtually any activity your heart desires, including, yes, fishing. In fact, we can even provide equipment for winter skiing, ice fishing, and other cold weather activities. Speaking of cold weather, the concept and feasibility of cold weather training for the Minnesota Guard was tested here in 1964. Since that meager beginning, Camp Ripley has developed into one of the premier winter training sites in the United States. Troops performing annual training learn military skiing, snowshoeing, and many other winter survival skills while still accomplishing all of their required range firing and tactical training. Winter training is popular with the Minnesota troops because they can apply many of these learned skills to their everyday lives. A winter operations instructor course is put on annually. It was developed in 1968 to help prepare key unit personnel in training their peers for the rigors and challenges of winter combat. The school is nine days in length and is staffed entirely by Minnesota Guard members. Graduates of the course return to their units and, during their winter annual training, assist their unit commanders as instructors. In addition to National Guard units from several states, troops from the Active Army, Active Marines, Marine Reserve, and the Army Reserve train here. As an example, both of the Active Army Ranger Battalions have trained here recently. Personnel from these units usually arrive by parachute and begin their field training immediately. Ripley also has a biathlon course, which is considered one of the finest in the country. The biathlon combines the skills of cross-country skiing and rifle marksmanship. It is a Winter Olympic sport and one of the toughest tests of a guard member's endurance. Competitors ski over a prescribed course, carrying a rifle on their backs and stopping to shoot at targets. The National Guard Championships are held here every other year. The camp's historical museum is our last stop on the tour. This building displays the valiant history of the Minnesota Guard from Civil War days to the present. It's obvious that Camp Ripley has a profound impact on the economy of central Minnesota. Troops in training, drilling guard members, and employees spend about $12 million in this region annually. Guard member units, federal and state employees from the neighboring communities of Little Falls, Brainerd, Piers, and Randall contribute to make Camp Ripley one of the premier training sites for the military in the United States. <laughs>